So today we have this beautiful 2014 Range Rover HSC full size and there is a short story about the way I bought it and the way uh, you can buy it but again there is a huge question always about that kind of car can you afford it after you bought it to buy this kind of car it's not a huge deal it's not a huge problem even the used one right now on the market there is a lot of them between 20 and 25,000 500 or 100 plus thousand miles on it and uh, probably instead of buying a used Corolla or used Honda Civic or Accord you can buy that kind of car but uh, again the problem is can you buy it and afford it can you buy it and not be scared about something gonna go wrong with the car and not gonna be uh, fixable because all the parts for this car is super expensive who's buying that kind of car when it's used I honestly personally I have no idea some of the people I I think I know for a fact they buy it because it's super comfortable and it's depreciated a lot so basically you buy in a luxury comfortable SUV for cheap right you're gonna feel yourself really good believe me when you drive in Range Rover not so many cars you can compare to that kind of car because it's comfortable it is a luxury and there is a lot of cool different options in this car which gonna feel you like the king you know because the queen and the king of United Kingdom they still driving Range Rover the whole uh, royalty family they driving only Range Rover not Mercedes not BMW Range Rover that means something you know so number one you might understand you buying that kind of car it's old it's problematic sometimes and it might gonna drain a lot of money from your pocket but you know what you're buying number two I think if you buy that kind of car you're gonna think about it what's the other people gonna think about you when you're driving this kind of car you kind of super rich you are success or I don't know you just have a lot of money that's the people's opinion because again not everybody checking that kind of car how much how much it worth right now on the market what's the difference between 2014 and 2017 or 2020 so basically my point is when this car passing by you have no idea what year in this car I mean what year is this car how much it costs to buy it you just thinking about super expensive Range Rover pass by that's it so that's the impression this car is gonna give you a lot of impression as a driver plus the people around who's passing by they're gonna be about the same oh this guy driving Range Rover so it means he has a lot of money I think that's kind of maybe not all the points but that's one of the points people thinking when you when they kind of choosing this car number one they bought a depreciated super nice luxurious car and uh, it's just super comfortable and feeling so nice and they do not care about repairs because they can handle it and number two they just buying it to impress someone or impress yourself so number one the main thing on the, all those cars especially Range Rover and uh, Jaguar all the buttons look at the buttons they all sticky I mean the paint is gone and honestly if you want to buy that kind of car and keep it for yourself I would say replace it or buy some kind of kit you know repair kit maybe on eBay and fix it because it's just super ugly it's not uh, it doesn't look like the car for <clears throat> 20 40 50 thousand it looks like the car for 3,000 you know so all those buttons whatever the rubber uh, paint or how you call it done from the new right now it just falling apart and it's super super sticky dirty and kind of uh, untouchable I don't want to touch the stuff like that just because ah, it feels like super dirty super filthy look look right here -de -de -de. and even if I'm gonna do the detail and they're gonna clean it super good it's still gonna be sticky like that these buttons they just start doing it a little bit not a lot so what we get in here we are getting a lot of different option right right like 360 camera we do have a honestly I don't like the design of it I mean this one I like it but the screen and this transmission shifter uh, I don't like it if you like it tell me about it 
I do like Range Rover, believe me or not, I love it, it's an amazing car. So I do have a satellite radio, I do have a Meridian sound system, and it sounds really good. So all those buttons, they are sticky. We have a huge glove box here, we do have a huge glove box right there. So we can put a lot of different stuff. So what about the panoramic roof? Let's try to open it. It's working perfectly fine. Usually it has a problem with that shade because it's falling down and you have to spend a lot of money to replace it. But I mean, I got lucky. It's all in great shape. They might didn't use it that much. So what we have here, what about the lights? LED lights, they kind of cool, I mean, at night. It's not actual button, you have to push the <coughs> glass itself. No, no, no. So this car doesn't have an option with uh, small ref. So some of them, they do have a, they do have a cooler, so you can put some bottles inside and it's gonna cool down or warm it up. So this one doesn't have it. Cup holders, they are so cool. Looks like nobody never smoke inside the car. We're gonna turn it off. So the sound of the engine is perfectly fine. Because right now the car is warmed up. And uh, there is no knocking noise at all. But the part I'm waiting, that's number one, the PCV valve sitting right there. Number two, the part I'm waiting, it's sitting right there. There is one pipe and it's going all around and going back to the in supercharger. I mean, it's easy to check it out. I just don't want to do it to get my hands dirty, but it's pretty clean, you know. For 10 years old Range Rover, it is a nice clean car. Do I have any leaks? No, I do not. Even the transmission is dry. Outside the car is just in amazing shape. The tires are Pirelli Scorpion, right? And they pretty much new. Yeah, somebody still love the Mitsubishi. I do not. On the back, I wouldn't say it was used a lot because the leather condition on the back, not I wouldn't say it's untouched, but it's in really great shape. No paint damage, no leather damage, just clean. Super nice. So we do have a climate control on the back and the seats, heated seats, it's all working. Believe me or not, it's all working, working good. Can complain. The space on the back, it's more than enough. You can pretty much feel yourself, feel yourself comfortable. This thing in the Range Rover, it's just super old school. It's super cool. So you can adjust your armrest. You can leave it even like that. You just have to adjust it, tight it. So it's not gonna go down. In case, for example, you wanna sit high like that. You just have to scroll it, scroll it, scroll it. And it's gonna go down. Oh, it's gonna stay like that. Same thing for the passenger side. It's super cool thing to play with, but I have no idea actually why they did it and why they still keeping it. All right, so what else we got in the back? We don't have a rear entertainment here. Some of the cars, they do have it. We have a huge armrest with cup holders. That's it, that's all we got. Trunk area, just insanely huge. You can do a lot of grocery. I can put my strollers on the back. And I mean, this car feels so good when you're driving it. The air suspension in this car is just amazing, but it's always problematic. Shocks always making a lot of problems for the Range Rover and you can buy it aftermarket right now because it's not expensive aftermarket. But same time you're gonna buy the aftermarket, you have to know about it. 
uh, it's not gonna last for 100,000, for example, like this car. It's, uh, it's 100,000 and all the shocks on this car, it's still original from the brand new. But if you're gonna put the Chinese one, any aftermarket, believe me or not, it's gonna last maybe between 10 and like 25,000 miles and it's gonna be gone again. That's the way you feel on yourself by sitting in Range Rover 2014 full size on the back seat. It's just super luxurious car. That's the way we have a suspension works. It's still working actually. Look, now it's going up. <laughs> That's cool. So now we can do off-roading on this car, but again it's a range rover you have to be careful it's not a jeep you cannot force it when you're doing off-road just because you cannot all those pipes on the engine they might gonna crack and break down so you're gonna get stuck somewhere in the middle of the of the nowhere and nobody come gonna come to help you out <laughs> that's the scary part about uh, buying old range rover and going somewhere far away for the off-roading so i wouldn't do that but see the sound of the engine is just amazingly good 200,000 miles range rover v6 supercharge hmm it's not scared at all the way engine runs right now so let me talk something a little bit about technology on this car so that's what we see the mileage that's, we see the check engine light on, like I say, it's going to be on for a while, not for a while, I hope for the next couple of days, and I'm going to fix it. But look, this car is 2014, right? The third generation of New Range Rover came in 2013, I think so, and uh, from my experience of my education, I know every single car, whatever coming to the market, believe me or not, it's been designed and it's been produced as a kind of example five years before production date. So basically, if this car 2014, 2013, first car came on, so it means they they kind of invented all kind of stuff five years before the car came on the market. But look at the cluster when you're changing the gears, the way they change it. Look at that. It's just amazing. I mean, that's the sport mode, that's the drive, that's the neutral, reverse, and the parking right here i think that's kind of cool and that's what that's all about this car there is a lot of different cool things but the main problem that's the mechanical problem what's the car am i gonna face later on or right now or any kind of time because you're driving hundred thousand miles range rover and it's like a time bomb so am i gonna kick right now or am i gonna kick later on and that's that's not only about the engine noise that's about your transmission that's about your air suspension that's about any kind of part on this car it's just hundred thousand mile range rover and there is nothing you can do about it and look at this car from the side it's just amazing it is a huge car you know it's a huge suv and always if you're thinking about uh, to buy the suv luxury suv with a lot of different options what do you have on the market would you have a range rover would you have a bmw x5 x7 was not exist at that time so would you have a mercedes gl but none of this car none of those cars can compare to range rover because range rover it just i would say on the top of all kind of suvs because sequoia honda pilot or whatever was available back in 2014 mercedes is, it's not the same you go into range rover and it's always new one overpriced it's always on demand you have to order one and wait for it i think <clears throat> The diesel was available and you still can buy the used diesel, but it was not so many available on the US market, US market. So, but in Europe, there is a lot of those kind of cars with diesel engine. I think it's gonna save you a lot of money over there, but I'm not sure if you can drive Range Rover diesel and you're gonna pay dollar or dollar plus more for the gas just to fill it out. I mean, each single gallon diesel, it's much more, not much more, but 
it's more expensive than the gas. And usually when the people drive in gas engine like that, they just put an 87. Believe me, they don't care about 91. It's supposed to take only premium. They drive in Mercedes, BMW, Range Rover, and they're always using the cheap gas because they don't care and because it doesn't make huge difference. But believe me, it does. Because on a cheap gas, you have to do maintenance. You have to do the oil change. Often you have to do the spark plugs just to make a car running perfectly like it's supposed to be. Believe me, you don't want to drive that kind of car with problems that you can't like, like I do have right now. And um, it's not, it's just not comfortable. But besides not comfortable, if you do have a check engine light on, your MPG is going to go down significantly. You're going to spend more money for the gas. Means it's like the, you have to find the balance. You have to spend money to fix your check engine light or you have to spend more money for the gas and not fixing the check engine light and just keep driving like that. And some of the people choosing this way, I think that's why when I got this car, it was 30 plus uh, engine codes just because somebody drove it for a period of time without fixing it, without checking it, what's going on and how much is going to fix, how much is going to be to fix those kind of problems. But I think when they find out it's going to cost that much, they just drop it and they just trade this car for something else. But again, before that, the Carfax shows a lot of maintenance records and the fact this car has a brand new Pirelli Scorpion Zero means a lot. So basically the owner of this car, he was spending money. He didn't put Chinese tires, you know, he put the Pirelli. That's cost money. That's what, that's, that's what main, that's the main point about this car. It costs money. Every time you drive in this car, it costs money. There is a huge chance something going to happen later on and it's going to cost money. So you have to you have to have that knowledge. You have to have that kind of opinion. You're not driving a brand new car and it might going to break down. But again, it is worth it to buy that kind of car if you understand meaning of the use Range Rover full size. Sport full size doesn't matter. But right now we're talking about full size. And believe me or not, I always was going to buy one like that with super depreciated price but not super high mileage not 150 about 100,000 120,000 because number one I want to see myself what's going on with this car and right now I can see there is kind of problems maybe transmission needs service you know maybe some adjustment calibration you can do that uh, the engine like I say there is a there is no oil leaks but the spark plugs definitely needs to be changed. The oil change, you know, the supercharger need attention, like the piece on the supercharger, the pulley and the bearings uh, needs to be replaced. Maybe change later on because they all stretching up and uh, they all stretching out. There is nothing you can do about it. It's just over the time, 100,000 miles, you have no idea what's the oil change been done or not recently and how often they've been doing the oil change. So your chains might gonna be, uh, needs to be replaced later on, but not right now. So that kind of things, you buy a Range Rover for cheap, but again, you're spending money, 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 money. And over the years, if you're going to keep it for like five years, you're going to see a lot of different receipts from the mechanic shop, how much you spend on this car. So basically, uh, I think that's one of the perfect examples of what you can do with this car. This car is perfectly built for a uh, different kind of outgoing. For example, you're going to the beach, right? You just park your car on the PCH uh, next to Malibu, at the beautiful beach and there is an ocean in front of you what you can do you can buy some food from the whole foods or whatever any any place you like to buy the food you just can put it here and maybe with your partner in crime uh or maybe with your kids because you can pull the seats down and your kids can sit over there so you're gonna have a lot of food here and you just can sit like that and chill you know for like a couple hours you can play some music and uh, it's gonna be beautiful evening time with you with you yourself or with your family, with your kids, but uh, you know or not, <coughs> Rolls Royce, Colin, right? They did the same way, but also they put the chairs so you can pull the chairs out and you can sit on them and just enjoy your view. So Range Rover made it like perfect way because we do have some cushion right here. It's not only plastic or metal. And some of the Range Rovers, they do have expensive wood trim in the trunk, the yacht trim, you know? that's the optional but in general it is insane amazing car with huge amount of technology inside that even this car 10 years old it's still impressing me 
as the used car dealer because I do buy in a lot of different cars. I know a lot of different technology from different brands, but Range Rover, it's always one of the top SUV I would think about it. I would say I would not buy the new one because number one, it's super expensive. Number two, they want a, a lot of money over stickers. So you cannot buy the Range Rover right now full size for sticker plus. You have to wait for it if you want to get the right car, not what they have available uh, because somebody <clears throat> didn't get approved for this car. So they got the car available for you, but I don't want it. I want something not like everybody got. I don't want a black. I don't want a white. I want some options. So I have to order it and I have to wait. Even I have to order it and wait for the new car, I'm going to pay over sticker. That's the point. So thank you so much, guys, for watching it. If you do have a Range Rover like that or the similar one, or maybe you have a previous body, let me know what's going on. Let me know how much money you spent for the repairs for the last year of, of your life with that kind of car. If you're planning to buy one, let me know what kind of budget uh, you have for this kind of car. And let me know if you are ready to spend more money during the time you're going to have this car. Again, it's a super amazing car. That's a Range Rover. That's the top of the line for the SUV. Right now, we do have a Lamborghini. We do have a uh, Rolls Royce. But it's not the same. It's much more money for those kind of cars. But again, you're not getting the same car as a Range Rover. Range Rover, you cannot compare with any other one. Mercedes BMW, I cannot compare those cars. Range Rover is just something different. Plus, it used to be UK car after India, after China, and all that kind of stuff. You know, the Ford came on and this and that and that. So there is a lot of different modification this car came through, and it's still going through. You know, Range Rover with 2.0 engine. Back in the days, you cannot even imagine it's supposed to be V8. If it's a Sport, maybe V6, maybe V8, but not 2.0. It just... Thank you so much for watching it. Let me know what you think about it and put some thumbs up. Please subscribe. I do have more videos coming and it's going to be super interesting later on. I hope to find more time to do more videos like that. Maybe like this, maybe like that. But I do appreciate it and uh, see you next time.